Hi, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we are going to be exploring how to solve area problems that involve fractions and mixed numbers. We're in our math journal on page 296, and let's jump right in. Now, before we get started, we should probably talk about the formula for finding the area of a rectangle. And if you recall, that formula is pretty simple. It's length times width equals the area. Now, if I were to solve that with a normal rectangle that has whole number measurements, it might look something like this. So let's say I have a rectangle that is 3 yards long and 2 yards wide. Okay, So basically what I would do is I would apply that formula length times width equals area and I would just multiply the length of the rectangle which is 3 times the width which is 2 and that gives me 6. 6 yards squared. Now what does that mean? Square units. Well basically when I'm figuring out the area of a problem what I'm doing is I'm dividing that space into square units. So I have three squares that go across the top and a second row of three squares that go across the bottom. Those are my square units. So each individual square would be considered a square yard. And the way that I would recognize that is by creating a one yard square. So this measurement right here is one yard and this measurement right here is one yard. So this is one yard squared. And that's what I'm doing when I'm determining area. How much space fills in the inside of the shape. So now I'm going to tackle that problem 5 yards times 2 thirds of a yard because the length of this rectangle is 5 and the width is 2 thirds of a yard. So I'm going to apply that formula 5 times 2 thirds of a yard equals something. Now again multiplication is just repeated addition so I'm multiplying five times something, I'm basically counting five of that item. So if I have two-thirds, it's basically I'm adding five groups of two-thirds together. So two-thirds plus two-thirds plus two-thirds plus two-thirds plus two-thirds. That's a lot of writing, which is why multiplication comes in handy. So when I am multiplying a fraction with a whole number, I'm going to take that whole number and I'm just going to multiply it by the numerator, that top number. And of course, when we multiply 5 times 2, that's going to give me 10. And then my denominator stays the same. So then my answer becomes 10 thirds. Now, 10 thirds of a yard is kind of hard to visualize. So what you want to do is you want to convert that to a mixed number. How many whole groups of yards can I get out of that amount? So the way that I do that is I divide. And I'm going to divide my numerator, the 10, by the denominator. How many groups of 3 can I get out of 10? Now, I know my math facts, and I know that 3 times 3 gives me 9, and 3 times 4 gives me 12, which is too much. So I'm just going to multiply 3 times 3 to give me 9, subtract the difference, and I'm left with 1, one third left over. And when I come up with my remainder, I'm going to take that up and I'm going to represent that as one-third. So ten-thirds is the same as saying three and one-thirds. And that's our answer. Three and one-thirds square yards. Now, some of you might have a hard time reconciling that because the length of the rectangle is five yards. And how can I have an answer of area that has a whole number smaller than the uh, length of the space that I was measuring? Well, this is uh, a little bit hard to explain, so I thought I might give you another visual model. Okay? So, two-thirds represents two out of a possible three-thirds of a yard. 
So if you take a look at this rectangle a little bit closer, and if I were to divide that rectangle into its two-thirds quadrants, like so, okay, and then if I were to divide this into five uh, sections for the five yards, like this, one, two, three, four, it's not... 100% to scale, so just bear with me, please. So I'm counting the number of yards in this space, square yards. Now, in this section right up here, in the upper left-hand corner, right here, I have one-third of a square yard, two-thirds of a square yard. If I go over to the second column right here, I get another third, and that gives me three thirds, okay? It's distributed along this long, skinny space, but area-wise, I have three thirds right there, which is the equivalent of one square yard, and then I would continue to count thirds. So let's pick a different color. Here's a third, there's a third, three-thirds, that gives me a second group of thirds. So two holes, or six-thirds. And then I would move on. One, two, three-thirds there. That gives me a third set of three-thirds, so three full square yards. And then I'm left with this, this leftover right here. Just one-third leftover. Not enough to make up a whole square yard, but still an amount of space. If I were, say, uh, planting grass seed in a long, narrow strip in the front of my yard, let's say that space that's between the street and the sidewalk that lines your front yard, that's a long, narrow strip, and I would need to know how much grass seed to lay down in that area, uh, and I would have to know the area. So as you can see, I've got uh, one square yard that's in green, a second square yard that's in yellow, and a third square yard that's in blue, and one-third left over, that's uh, my fraction. Okay? Let's try a different problem, shall we? Let's take a look, actually, at uh, problem number two. Three meters times four and three-tenths. Okay, so same uh, process. I'm going to multiply length times width. And of course, I'm going to set up my formula. Length times width equals area. Only this time, I have a mixed number involved. My mixed number is 4 and 3 tenths. And I'm going to multiply that by 3. Now, the best way to approach this problem is thinking of it as a multi-digit uh, multiplication problem because when I am dealing with fractional amounts, that's a place value. So I'm going to set this problem up a different way. I'm going to set it up vertically, 4 and 3 tenths over 3, like so. And that way I can set it up as a partial products problem which I'll do this way, 4 times 3, and then 3 tenths times 3, okay? So I solve each of those individual problems. Well, 4 times 3, of course, is 12, and then 3 times 3 gives me 9, so 3 tenths times 3 would give me 9 tenths. I add those two amounts together, and you'll notice that I, I position the fractions in a different column than I did for my whole numbers, like so. And that's so that you can see that when I add no tenths to nine tenths, that's going to leave me with nine tenths. And when I add 12 to nothing, that leaves me with 12. So my area answer is 12 and 9 tenths square meters. Okay? One last problem. This time we're going to look at 
this problem right here, number four. We need to find the area of the space. Now, the information they gave us is the length of one side, six inches, and then the total perimeter. Now, remember, perimeter is the measure of the outside. So I'm going to help you set up this problem so that you can find the information that you need, and then I'll let you figure out the area on your own. So this amount is 6 inches, okay? which means that the bottom here is also 6 inches. Okay. Now, perimeter problems are solved this way. We add the length plus the length plus the width, plus the width, and that gives us the perimeter, okay? Now, the information we have so far is this. We know that the length is 6, so we know we're adding 6 plus 6 together, then we're adding width plus width, and that's going to give us a total of 13 and 2 fourths inches. So 6 plus 6 plus something plus something gives us 13 and 2 fourths. So now let's reverse that problem. I'm going to make this into a subtraction problem. So 13 and 2 fourths minus 6 plus 6 equals what would be the width times 2, or width plus width, okay? So, our problem right here is as follows. 13 and 2 fourths minus 12, because 6 plus 6 gives us 12. So what is 13 and 2 fourths minus 12? Well, let's set up that problem vertically. 13 and 2 fourths. Take away 12. Now, if I have no fractional amount in the bottom number, I'm just going to bring down the 2 fourths, and then 13 minus 12, of course, is 1. So 1 and 2 fourths. So 13 and 2 fourths minus 12 is going to leave us with 1 and 2 fourths, which is the equivalent of 2 widths, width plus width, or width times 2. So then what I would do is I would divide 1 and 2 fourths in half. Okay? All right, I know some of your minds are already blown, so let's break this down even further, shall we? What is 1 and 2 fourths? Well, 1 and 2 fourths is one whole with two more fourths off to the side. So this is 1, and this is 2 fourths. So if I were to imagine those as fourths, okay, and if I were to split up my fourths into two groups, that would be this, like saying I have six fourths, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now if I split them up in half, one and two fourths is the same as saying three-fourths and three-fourths that gives us six-fourths. So that tells me that the width of the the rectangle that we see here is three-fourths. Now after all that's said and done to figure out the area of this problem you're going to do the following. Length times width equals area. So what you're going to do is you're going to multiply the length, which is 6 inches, times 3 fourths. And that will give you your answer. If you have questions, please reach out to your uh, math teachers. Otherwise, we will talk again soon. Thanks.